Hi kids, welcome to John Deere Action Part 4. My name is Jeff. We have another great show for you. We're going to see how sugar is harvested, how tractors with rubber tracks compare with tractors with rubber tires. We'll see the latest tractors and combines from John Deere, plus a lot more. So let's get started. As always, we open with a song. I traveled around the world and driven coast to coast. But riding on a big machine is what I like the most. Tractors plowing fields, dozers moving earth. There's nothing else like JD life in all the universe. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. I've driven fancy cars, but that's just not for me. I'd rather spend the morning with my good old friend JD. Digging in the ground, hauling dirt and stone. Working in the farming fields or big construction zones. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. Well, I've driven the steamer trains, I've flown hot air balloons. But digging in the dirt is how I spend my afternoons. No matter where I go, no matter what I see, there's nothing else like driving hard a working big machine. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. Tractors are the most important piece of equipment on any farm. Why? Because tractors do many jobs, and they make jobs that used to be very hard to do, very easy to do. Take plowing. It used to be a man with a single plow behind a horse. Now big tractors pull big plows over the fields while the farmer sits in a plush cab listening to his favorite music. See what I mean? Much easier. Over the winter, the ground gets hard and the farmer has to loosen it to plant his crops. They call this tilling. Some farmers use a plow to till. Others use a disc harrow. The idea is to go over the fields as few times as possible to save fuel. But you have to make sure the ground is loose, so air and water can reach the plant's roots. After the field is prepped, the farmer is ready to plant the seeds. Way long ago, before there were tractors, farmers would walk up and down their fields, throwing the seeds out by hand. This was hard work and took a long time. Today, a farmer can plant an area equal to 100 football fields in one day. Different seeds require different types of planters. The most common planter is called an air drill. It plants small grains like wheat, barley, and oats. A tractor pulls the air drill, which makes holes in the furrows left by the disc harrow. The holes are all spaced evenly apart and the drill drops seeds into the holes. The big yellow container, called a hopper, holds the seeds and shoots the seeds through hoses to each drill. After the seed is dropped into the soil, a press wheel pushes the seeds down to the bottom of the furrow. Then the closing wheel, which rides behind the press wheel, covers the seeds with just the right amount of dirt. When it's time to move over to another field, the air drill folds up so it's narrow enough to be pulled down a country road. 
Once the seeds begin to grow, the farmer has to protect them. Plants need the right amount of sunlight and rain, which the farmer can't control. But one thing the farmer can control is weeds. Weeds are greedy. They use up water and nutrients in the soil meant for the plants, so weeds have to be destroyed. That's where the cultivator comes in. The tractor pulls the cultivator over the soil between the rows, and the hooks of the cultivator dig down into the soil and yank out the weeds growing between the rows of plants. My grandpa was a farmer. He told me that he always felt good after he cultivated his fields. Said he could close his eyes and see all the nutrients in the soil flow past the yanked out roots of the weeds and flow into the roots of his plants. Combines are only used at harvest time. They can nap the rest of the year. But tractors are used all year round. We have already seen how they plow, plant, spray, and cultivate. You'd think, come harvest time, tractors would get a little rest. Oh no! The tractor has to work with the combine to help bring in the harvest. As the combine separates the grain from the plant stalks, the tractor drives alongside the combine, pulling a wagon. The tractor has to drive at the same speed as the combine because the tractor has to make sure his wagon catches all the grain being shot over by the combine. Then the tractor has to pull the heavy, loaded wagon over to a truck where it is unloaded, then hustle back to the combine for another load. After the harvest, winter arrives and the snow starts falling. Finally, Mr. Tractor can take a break. Not so fast. Hook up that snowblower. We've got snow to move. Oh no, says Mr. Tractor. I thought I'd finally get some sleep.
Did you know that John Deere tractors also help around a racetrack? Well, they do. Let me show you. We're at the Keeneland Horse Racing Track, just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. It's a busy day at Keeneland. Lots of horse racing fans are here. The races have already started. The horses race around an oval track, a little more than a mile long. Where do John Deere tractors come in? Well, for one thing, the track has to be smoothed out after every race, and four John Deere tractors do the work. But that's not all. The starting gate has to be pulled off the track after each race starts, and back onto the track after each race ends. It's a beautiful day for the race and Johnny Popper takes the early lead. Most races are on the dirt, but some are on the infield grass. The starting gate has to be moved on and off the track because after the horses leave the gate and the race starts, the horses will soon be coming back around the track racing for the finish line and they will pass, running as fast as they can, the exact spot where the starting gate was. So the John Deere tractor has to be nimble and quick. So every race day is a busy day at Keeneland. There's horses and jockeys warming up, horses with their handlers on parade, the fans in the stands trying to decide which horse is going to win which horse is going to come in second, and which horse is going to come in third. By the way, if you think your horse is going to win, you bet on your horse to win. If you think your horse is going to come in second, you bet on your horse to place. If you think your horse is going to come in third, you bet on your horse to show. And the winner is number seven, Johnny Popper. We already have seen how a John Deere mower keeps Soldiers Field, the home of the Chicago Bears, in shape. Well, check out this John Deere Gator smoothing out the dirt at Safeco Field in San Diego, California, home of the San Diego Padres. So don't think John Deere's just get to work on the farm. John Deere is everywhere. John Deere offers rubber track tractors and tractors with rubber tires. How do you decide which to buy? That answer does not come easy because it depends on many things, like what type of soil do you have, what implements you plan to use with your tractor, and what types of jobs do you want your tractor to do. Let's see how they compare doing basic jobs on a farm. We'll talk about a straight line power pull first. Which can pull the heaviest load straight ahead? Track tractors win this one. They slip less and get more traction. So track tractors can pull a heavier load in a straight line. Which can pull a heavier load on a turn? Rubber tires are stronger on a turn because a track tractor has to slow or stop one of the tracks in order to make the turn so it could lose up to half its power. Track tractors work better in soft or muddy soil. And wheel tractors work better on hard, packed soil. Think about it. Wheels sink in the mud 
and start slipping or spinning and may even get stuck. The track tractor floats over the top of the muddy soil and seldom, if ever, gets stuck. But on hard soil, rubber tires get better traction. If your soil is mostly dry and hard, choose rubber wheels. If your soil is soft and muddy, better go with tracks. Farmers like to keep their soil loose and not packed. Heavy wheeled tractors pack the soil tight. The track tractor distributes its weight over a greater area, so they don't pack the soil as tight as the wheeled tractors do. For row crop farms, wheeled tractors are better because you can adjust the wheels to fit the space between your rows. Track tractors need more maintenance but you don't have to worry about air pressure and you never get a flat tire. Track tractors give you a smoother ride over bumps in the field, but on the road, wheel tires are softer, smoother, and faster. You can make a tighter turn with track tractors, but that skidding track tears up the ground. So, which is better? Both have strong points, and both have not so strong points. Only you can decide what's best for you. Now here they come, riding down the track with old John Deere, sitting on the back, chugging down the line. Nothing looks so fine There's lots of trucks And tractors aboard And that's not all There is much, much more Over hill and dale With John Deere riding the rail And plenty of dozers and some graders And some big heavy loaders They make quite a team With diesel motors and steam Along the way, together they draw a big crowd And people wave and give a cheer right out loud It's a true American tale When John Deere's riding the rails when John Deere's riding the rails When John Deere's riding the John Deere's latest and most powerful combine is this new S690. It comes with wheels or front tracks. Farmers who have to harvest soft, muddy fields prefer tracks to wheels because tracks work better in the mud. John Deere has made tracked tractors before, but this S690 combine is the first combine to have tracks even though they're just in the front. Those are continuous metal tracks with rubber pads. The main advantage of tracks over wheels is that tracks spread the combine's weight over a larger part of the ground. That's why tracks work better in the mud. The tracks sort of float over the ground instead of digging in like wheels do. Another big advantage of tracks, you'll never get a flat tire. The S690's most powerful engine outs over 600 horsepower, and the new cab offers more space, excellent visibility, good lighting, easy to reach controls, 
even a refrigerator, and a CD player with a subwoofer. The grain tank holds 400 bushels of grain. That means you spend less time unloading and you can bang out the acres fast. And you don't have to refill the gas tank very often either. It holds 330 gallons. John Deere heads come as wide as 40 feet and can harvest up to 18 rows in one pass. Harvesting the crops sure have come a long way since John Deere introduced their number 45 model in the 1950s. It held 15 gallons of gas and the grain bin held 40 bushels. Tracks or wheels? That is the question. I like them both, but it still seems strange to see tracks on a combine. I guess I'll just have to get used to it. We've already talked about John Deere cotton pickers in part one and part three. The 7760 is John Deere's newest cotton picker. John Deere makes it simple. All you need is a 7760 cotton picker and an 8000 or a 9000 series tractor with a rear handling CM1100 cotton bale hauler. When it's time to harvest, the 7760 just keeps on moving. It picks the cotton, forms the bales inside the picker, covers the bales with plastic recyclable wrap that protects the cotton from the rain, then drops the bales out the back. where they are picked up by that 8335 tractor with the rear handling attachment. The 7760 features six row, non-stop harvesting and is powered by a 530 horsepower engine. These John Deere cotton pickers from the 1960s only picked two rows at a time. By the way, I call these cotton bales. The fancy name for them is modules. Bales or modules, they weigh about 500 pounds.
here's your ragtime band. Come on in here, come on in here, it's the best band in the land. Uh, rolling along all yellow and green, the most wonderful sight you've ever seen. And soon you've never felt so grand. Come on along, come on along, as we work that rugged ground. Come on along, come on along, and hear that engine sound. And if you want to hear that engine play in ragtime, come on along, come on along, it's John Deere's Ragtime Band. We know about sugar. It makes all the things we like, candy, cakes, and cookies, taste yummy. Harvesting sugarcane can be a tricky business. The sugarcane plant is sort of fussy. First, sugarcane needs lots of sun, lots of hot weather, and lots of water. But not too much water, just the right amount of water. A sugarcane farmer has to be patient because sugarcane takes a long time to grow. We're used to planting crops in the spring and harvesting them in the fall. But sugarcane plants can take twice that long before they're ready for harvest, sometimes as long as 16 months. The sugarcane plant is ready for harvesting when there's a thick, waxy residue on the stalks and the plant stands about 10 feet tall. The best time to harvest is between June and December, when rainfall is less frequent and the plant's sugar content is at its highest. In the old days, farmers would burn their fields to remove leaves, weeds, and other trash which get in the way of harvesting. But today, farmers harvest the sugarcane plants with a big machine like this John Deere 3520 Sugarcane Harvester. Let's talk about the main parts of the 3520. This is the base cutter. It cuts the stalks off close to the ground. They call that cylinder that is turning above the base cutter the butt lifter. Those sharp rotating blades are called toppers because they cut the tops of the sugarcane plant off. Those rotating cone-shaped things are called scrolls. The scrolls force the stalks into the center of the harvester, where the base cutter cuts them off. The domed shape area in the back is called the extractor. The extractor blows out all leaves and cuttings, while the heavier sugarcane stalks drop to the bottom of the elevator. The elevator carries the stalks to the top, where they drop into a wagon, which is being pulled alongside the harvester. See all the leaves and stalks flying about? That's because the harvester is cutting down the entire plant, not just the stalks. It looks messy, but that mess will be good for next year's crop. Why? Because all those leaves and cuttings flying about and landing in the field will form a mulch on top of the ground. The mulch recycles the plant's nitrogen and keeps in moisture, stops the growth of weeds, and helps prevent soil erosion. So all that stuff flying about will help make next year's sugar crop even better. Pete is our operator today. Before Pete starts harvesting, he does a walk around to make sure that everything is okay before he starts the engine. He checks the scrolls and the base cutter to make sure they are clear, raises the cab, and checks out the engine and the hydraulic hoses. It all checks out, so Pete is ready to ride. Pete sits in the cab and controls all the action with buttons and joysticks. Another thing about sugarcane, 
you don't have to plant seeds for next year's crop. Sugarcane is a perennial. That means it grows continuously, year after year. Pete drives the 3520 down the rows of sugarcane. Blades inside the machine cut the stalks into short pieces called billets. Billets are raw sugar. The billets are loaded into wagons, which are pulled alongside the harvester by a tractor. That's a John Deere 7330 tractor, working with the 3520 sugarcane harvester. When full, the billets are loaded into a truck and taken to the sugar refinery, where the raw sugar is made into white, refined sugar you have at home. Sugarcane is the world's largest crop. That means more sugar is grown than corn or soybeans or wheat. Brazil is the largest producer of sugarcane in the world. Other countries that produce sugar include India, Pakistan, China, Thailand, and Mexico. The United States also produces sugar. The leading sugar producing states are Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and Hawaii. Hey, that was fun. Now we know a lot more about where sugar comes. Remember, sugar makes everything taste good, but you have to be careful how much you eat. That means go easy on the cookies, cake, and ice cream. Eat an apple or an orange instead. Tractors come in many different sizes and shapes. Some have rubber tires, others have rubber tracks. Some have four wheels, some eight wheels, and some even 12 wheels. John Deere's biggest tractors are their 9000 series. Next in size is the 8000. 
then 7,000 series tractors. Here's one of John Deere's biggest tractors, the 9280. It has eight wheels and the rear wheels are over eight feet tall. How tall are you? The tractor weighs 25,000 pounds and the gas tank holds 180 gallons. Your family car holds about 20 gallons. The 9280 has 18 different forward speeds and six different reverse speeds. There's a 250 horsepower engine under the hood and the cab is air conditioned. I said the tractor is the most important machine on the farm, mainly because it does so many jobs. Let's take a look at all the jobs tractors big and small do on the farm. Tractors scoop and move dirt, move heavy stuff, bring hay to the horses and cattle. Farmers need different types of tractors for the different types of crops. Apples and cherries grow in orchards and grapes grow in vineyards. They grow in long rows of trees and vines with only a few feet of space between the rows. John Deere makes special tractors for use in vineyards and orchards. This 5 Series tractor is just over 40 inches wide and easily fits between the rows of grapes. These are narrower than regular tractors, but they can have the same horsepower. They are called narrow crop tractors. The tractors that work in orchards are outfitted with smooth, streamlined fenders. The smooth fenders prevent the tree branches from getting snagged on the tractor as it passes. Tractors play a big role in harvesting hay and getting hay to the livestock. First, the hay is cut and left in windrows. This tractor pulls a round hay baler over the windrows. The baler picks up the windrows and forms the loose hay into round bales. Then pops the bale out the back where it sits in the sun until another tractor with a front end fork attachment picks up the round bale and takes it to the cattle who love to see the tractors coming around the corner with the hay held high and moving fast. Those hay bales are packed tight and can weigh 500 pounds. Tractors also are used for mowing grass. Little lawn tractors you see in suburban neighborhoods and big tractors pulling big mowers along the interstate highways. Tractors do just about everything. Did we miss anything? If you know of a job tractors do that we didn't mention, let us know. We may use your idea in our next John Deere show. Well, time to go. I still have more homework to do. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next time. I've traveled around the world and driven coast to coast. But riding on a big machine is what I like the most. Tractors plowing fields, dozers moving earth. There's nothing else like JD Life in all the universe. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. I've driven fancy cars, but that's just not for me. I'd rather spend the morning with my good old friend JD. Digging in the ground, hauling dirt and stone. Working in the farming fields or big construction zones. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. Well, I've driven steamer trains, I've flown hot air balloons. But digging in the dirt is how I spend my afternoon. No matter where I go, no matter what I see, there's nothing else like driving hard a working big machine. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action. When I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere action.
Hay balers, cotton pickers, and windrowers working the fields. Dozers, front end loaders, and graders building a road, and snow blowers in the Rockies shooting snow 50 feet in the air. We talk about precision farming, the new trend in agriculture, how global positioning uses satellites to guide the farmer so there's no wasted time or energy. Farming and farm equipment are rapidly changing, and this DVD will get you up to date with the latest in farm and construction equipment. We visit a John Deere dealer just before harvest time. Wall to wall with John Deere action, from plowing the field to building a road. And we take fun visits to Speedyville and Backwardsville, where everything goes fast and backwards. Kids will learn and laugh, grown-ups too. John Deere Action Part 3, get it on your mind. I want some satisfaction, all I need is John Deere Action. John Deere works in English and Spanish. See great John Deere action, both farm and construction machines. The narration is in both English and Spanish, a great way for Spanish-speaking kids to learn English and English-speaking kids to learn Spanish. Combine, La Cosechadora. Combines are used to harvest the crops. Las cosechadoras se utilizan para la cosecha de los cultivos. See tractors, combines, hay rakes, hay balers, sprayers, dozers, excavators, front end loaders, graders, backhoes, and more working hard in the fields and on the roads. Kids learn what these farm and construction machines do their main parts and see all these great machines in action. Fun and educational for the entire family. You want big, tough machine action? Look no further. Earth Mover Action Part 2 has it all. We visit the John Deere demonstration grounds in Moline, Illinois, where expert operators put all of John Deere's big machines to the test. Excavators digging deep and loading big dump trucks. Dozers pushing giant piles of dirt. Graders leveling the ground on steep slopes. Loaders lifting bucketfuls of dirt high, then dumping. Skid steers, compactors, and backhoes too. Then to the forests of the Northwest, where we see full tree harvesting in action. Feller bunchers, skidders, knuckle boom loaders, and harvesters, cutting down trees and taking them to the sawmill. We also visit with Charlie the Wonder Dog, listen to Jim Coffey's toe tapping music, and more. What we have here is non-stop big machine action and fun. Climb aboard. Mover action. John Deere action part two. More exciting John Deere action. See how John Deere makes tractors. Cheer for the best tractor parade ever. See Johnny Poppers. Plus the biggest new John Deere tractors working in the field with John Deere's biggest implements. Plus new songs by James Coffey. John Deere Action Part 2. Great entertainment for the entire family. From the creators of the popular All About John Deere video series comes an all-new series, John Deere Action. More wall-to-wall -wall John Deere. Part 1 covers the cotton picker, spring planting and cultivating, 
the 80-20 reunions, skid steers, motor graders, and much more. Plus new songs by James Coffey. John Deere Action Part 1. If you love John Deere, you'll love this show. John Deere Action. New from TM, Fun on the Farm Part 2. Are you ready for some fun? Well, let's go. We'll visit a big dairy, go to Sunshine's birthday party, learn about colors, shapes, farm machines, and play everyone's favorite, the cloud game. You'll meet Charlie, the great ball chaser, Speedy the turtle, and you'll see lots of John Deere tractors. Plus, six new songs from our favorite singer-songwriter, James Coffey. Fun on the Farm Part 2. You'll learn, laugh, and want more. Don't miss it. From the creators of All About John Deere and John Deere Action comes a new series aimed at the preschool set. Fun on the farm. We'll talk about the growing season. You'll see tractors, new and old, planting, cultivating, combines harvesting the crops. We'll visit a farm right in the middle of a big city, see how John Deere makes combines, visit a pizza farm, and play the cloud game. You'll be amazed at what you can find in the sky. You'll meet our pals, Doodle Rooster, Bell Cow, and Harvey Horse. Plus nine new songs by James Coffey, including the Wacky Farm song and Old MacDonald Had a Farm. So come on along for guaranteed fun and laughs. You'll see lots of tractors, farm animals, steam engines, combines, and you'll learn a lot. I know I did. Till then. <laughs> New from TM Books and Video, a special edition DVD featuring the best parts of the nationally acclaimed video series all about John Deere for Kids, parts one through four. See the biggest and newest John Deere farm and construction machines, 9,000 series tractors, combines, dozers, front end loaders, and excavators, all in action, planting, plowing, harvesting, and moving the earth. John Deere's famous Johnny Poppers in parades and working the fields. Plus original songs by award-winning singer-songwriter James Coffey. Over 60 minutes of great John Deere fun and excitement. If you love John Deere, you'll love this DVD. Bonus, follow the fun adventures of Otto the jam-prone farm worker who's always getting into trouble. John Deere, made a better plow, John Deere. Name that's famous now, John Deere. I'll tell you how, it's all about John Deere. John Deere, singing strong and loud, John Deere. Stands out in the crowd, John Deere. Makes America proud, it's all about John Deere.